Right guys, welcome to Startless Star Hopping. My name's Colin. Uh, the reason for these series of videos is quite simple really. It's to help you locate targets in the night sky. I know a lot of people, especially beginners, they'll get a new telescope for Christmas, they'll take it out, they'll point it towards the sky and all they see is stars. They don't see all the bright nebula or galaxies that they're expecting to see. And they don't even know how to go about finding these targets. So they get very despondent very quickly and they'll just chuck the telescope in the shed or the attic and forget about it and that's it. Which is a real shame because there's some beautiful targets to be seen up there. So hopefully I'm going to make a few videos and teach you how to find them. And the easiest way, if you don't have a computerised telescope, is by a process called star hopping. Which is, as the name suggests, when you've selected what target you want to view, you find the nearest bright star to it. And then you just jump from star to star to hone in on your target. Now, in order to do that effectively, you've got to do a bit of preparation beforehand. During the daytime, and you need a couple of bits of kit. None of it expensive. Uh, the first one is a startless. This is the one I use. It's the Cambridge Startless. Cost me, I think it was £20, and it maps all the stars in the sky up to magnitude 6.5. Great piece of kit. And you also need something called a planisphere. Again, just a fiver. And that shows you where all the constellations are on a given time, on a given night. And that'll help you get a rough idea, a rough overview of the sky at any particular time. I've also made up this. It's basically just a business card with a hole cut out of it. Now the hole is represents a 5 degree diameter on the startless, which is the same as what you should see through a standard finder scope. I've also put a scale of up to 0 up to 20 degrees to help you take measurements on that list. So, in this video, we're going to find two targets, both galaxies. We're going to find the M51 Whirlpool Galaxy and the M101 Pinwheel Galaxy. Both fairly simple to find, and they're both in Arzumatia, which is the Big Dipper, probably the most obvious target that there is in the night sky. So, let's get started. So, as you can see, we've got a star atlas open to the right page. And up here in the top left-hand corner you'll see Ursa Major, also known as the Big Dipper or the Plough, depending on where you are. And then if we zoom in, you'll see that we've got our two targets there. We've got M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, and up there, M101, the Pinwheel Galaxy. So once you find them on the chart, it's always good just to stick a little tag on them to make them stand out. And when you're doing this, Try not to cover any other stars on the page. Right, we'll start off with the Whirlpool Galaxy. And as you can see, looking at the chart, you can see that there's a very obvious star just next to it called Alcade. So if you get your card with a hole in it, and just put it directly over the Alcade, and this represents what you should see in the fighter scope. Now when you're doing this with your scope at night time it's always a good idea just to take a look through the eyepiece to make sure your finder scope is lined up. You should have that star right in the middle of the eyepiece. So once you've got that in place you want to take note at what other stars are in there if you see any patterns anything like that. We can see there's a small triangle here with a slightly brighter star just below it. So that's something we need to take a note of, and I'll show you why in a bit. So the next stage is just to slowly move your scope down so your starting star disappears to the top of the finder scope and eventually just disappears. And you'll see that the whirlpool is just about in the center there. But you've got to remember when you're looking through your finder scope, it's quite a faint target, so you might not see it. This might just look like empty space. You'll have to look through the main scope in order to see the target. Uh, it's a magnitude 8.4 target, so it's fairly bright. 
it's a nice target. If you can't see it, depending on light pollution, maybe use a bit of averted vision. So, we can't take you outside to show you it, but we've got the program Stellarium, so we'll show you on that, showing you how it should look through the scope. So this program loaded up on my computer in front of me goes by the name of Stellarium. It's a fantastic piece of software, completely free to download. And it'll chart all the stars and targets in the night sky viewed from anywhere in the world. And you can have it adjusted and set any way you want it. At the minute I've got it set so it's showing stars into magnitude 10. Uh, a lot of people's skies might suffer from light pollution so they won't get it that dark. But the reason I've chosen down to magnitude 10 is because that's roughly the level of stars you should see in your finder scope. But will it vary a little bit depending on light pollution, etc, etc. But if we say 10 is average. Right, our first task is to find the Big Dipper. And to do that, that's where we use the planisphere. So this is a planisphere. It's a very simple but very effective bit of kit. It's very easy to set up. The way you do it, if you look at the bottom, you'll see your dates and your times. So if you just slide it to when you want to do a viewing. This is the 22nd of February at 11 o'clock. So you can see that's lined up there. And then in your window, that's what the night sky will look like at that point, where all the constellations are. So you can see we've got our measure there. And if you look just on the windows, it's pretty much on the southeast skies and directly above our heads. So if we go back to Stellarium and then spin round until we're facing southeast and then look up, you see there's the big dipper there. And shining brightly away is Alcade, and that's our starting star. So we select that and go to ocular view. What you see in there is pretty much what you should be able to see through your finder scope. Now there's two things to note here. First of all, there's a lot more stars. Our atlas only goes up to magnitude 6.5, but we've got Solarium set to go up to magnitude 10. But the second thing to note, and that's most importantly, is when we were planning our star hop on the atlas, we identified a group of stars next to Al Qaeda, triangle one on the end, and that's them up there. On the atlas, they're down to the side, but because as the Earth spins, the sky appears to rotate, they will be positioned differently depending on when you're viewing, so it's very, very important to get your orientation right. If you don't do that, you could be heading off in completely the wrong direction and you won't find anything. So now we know our orientation. Instead of like on the atlas where we move the finder scope up and down, we're going to need to move from left to right. So we keep doing that until Alcade disappears to from view. Our target should appear. And there it is there, M51. Now it is a little bit off, it's a little bit different from where it is in the Atlas, but certainly if you've got a wide field view eyepiece you should be able to pick that up. Right now we found the Whirlpool Galaxy, we can start making plans for finding M101, the Pinwheel Galaxy. But this time instead of just going directly from our starting point to the target, we're going to need to go via another set of stars. Now if you look at the atlas, we've got a choice between where we start. We can either start Alcad or we can start Mizar. Now if you look at Mizar, there's a line of stars which come away from it heading up to M101, but they're quite faint, so it might be a bit too easy to get confused with all the background stars. But if you look at Alcad, you've got these two bright stars here. So it should be a fairly easy case of going from Alcad to these stars here, and then it's just a simple hop over to M101. So that's the way we'll do it. So if we just put a little tag on Alcad to 
denote our starting point. And then another one just up here to mark our star hop. So if you get your card and centre on Alkaid. However, last, as we learned from last star hop, our little triangle of stars here, because of the orientation of the Earth, they aren't in the 3 o'clock position as shown, they're up in the 12 o'clock position, as you can see. We're going to need to rotate the atlas to give us the correct view. Like that. So now we've got the correct orientation, we can start making our first move. And that's going from Alked to these two stars here. So, as you can see, as Alked disappears at about the 3 o'clock position, our two stars appear about the 8 o'clock position. So then, if we centre them, that's just done our first hop. So if we give that a go. So that's Alked in the middle. And then if we just move that, and as that vanishes, our new star should appear somewhere in the bottom left. And there they are there, look. So we centre on them. And then we can confirm that's the correct stars, because we've also got that another brighter one down there in the bottom left. So that's us done our first star hop. So the next job is just to find the target. So as you can see, M101 is up and just slightly to the left of the two stars we're focused on at the minute. So if we just move the finder scope up. As they disappear from field of view, the galaxy should be pretty much in the middle of your finder scope. So as you can see, as we move the finder scope up, that's our target just coming into view. And as our two bright stars disappear at the bottom, then our target's pretty much in the middle and slightly to the left. That's planned. Now remember, because it's quite a faint target, you might not actually be able to see it in the finder scope, so you might just have to place the two bright stars at the bottom of your view and then just look through the main eyepiece. And you should be able to see it or it won't be far away, it won't take much to find it from there. Well I hope that was helpful and I hope you learned something. Uh, as you can probably tell it's the first video I've made so if you've got any criticism, any comments just leave them down below. Likewise, if you've got any targets that you want help finding, then just again stick a comment in and I'll do what I can. Thank you for watching. Bye.